Good morning. Welcome to another Sunday. You know, today is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, wait, I have my Raiders gear on. I almost thought it was football season from this last Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You know, the NFL draft is on. I mean, sports are about ready to start. But is our lives full of what is going on around us? Or is your life full of the Word of God? You know, that's the question that is going to be presented today in the sermon. I'm ready for the sermon to start. Are you ready for the sermon to start? My coffee mug's almost empty. Is your coffee mug almost empty? Here in the next few minutes, please go get a refill in your coffee. Maybe you need your breakfast. Maybe you need your lunch. Maybe you need your Bible on your lap. That's the question you can ask yourself because we need to ask ourselves and be true to ourselves. You know, this is a great Sunday. This is the day that the Lord has made and I am ready for the sermon. Are you ready for the sermon? Thank you for joining. Please like and share. Chat out to the side, to your right side. Thank you. The sermon is about ready to start. Life is fragile. It's a fact we're learning in real time, every day. What we once called normal has seemingly disappeared. There's uncertainty in the air, restlessness in our hearts. Things we once took for granted are becoming difficult to find. Our usual day-to-day -day has evolved into this odd chaos. Peace is becoming obsolete. Many have lost jobs, security, and those they love. The pain is undeniable. But what if our fragility caused us to lean harder into God? What if, in our weakness, we chose to rely more on His strength? Would our outlook change? Would the peace that passes understanding begin to drown out the noise of this moment? Would we walk in a quiet confidence, knowing our God is mighty to save? We're not promised tomorrow, but we are given a simple truth to stand on. Our God goes before us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Yes, life is fragile. But in our weakness, He is strong.
good morning. You know, just working on a little bit of my foundation, you know, to stay physical fit. <laughs> you know, hey, glad you, welcome. Welcome home, welcome to your own home, or welcome to where you need to be in your life. You know, the title of my message today is called The Truth. It's gonna be out of Matthew chapter seven, 24 through 27. You know, it talks about a rock solid foundation. You know, what is your foundation? What is your foundation like? You know, I was just doing some kettlebell swings. I love where I work out at. I love the atmosphere. But in the last month, we haven't been able to corporate be together. You know, I love gyms. I love the gatherings. I love corporate gatherings. But it all goes into what is our own foundation in our own walk. You know, here in Matthew chapter 7, it talks about a foundation built on a rock. But that foundation sometimes comes across some adversity. What has been your adversity? My adversity is, you know, I have to do a little bit of just not barbell work, what I normally do. I love CrossFit. I love working on the barbell. But, you know, some kettlebells. Kettlebell swings that I was just doing. I love those. I've learned how to develop some of my foundation in my physical fitness. But what about my mental fitness? My spiritual mental fitness? And I think that's what almost Matthew chapter 7 is unpacking here. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for what you are doing in our lives, Lord. Lord, I just don't want to be physical fit, but I want to be spiritual fit. I want to have a spiritual mental toughness that is built on the foundations of your lives, Lord. Lord, thank you for doing what you've done in my life. But Lord, I ask that you continue to open eyes and open ears, Lord. Lord, I ask that this message encourages people, develops people's lives. Lord, I thank you for what you have done in my life. Lord, the same way I ask that this message impacts other people. Lord, I thank you for what you are going to do through this message. Thank you for what you have done in my life. Lord, use me as a vessel to speak to your people. I ask that you change them from the inside out. And I thank you for what you are doing. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You know, in Matthew chapter 7, 24 through 27, it states this. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Through the rain comes in torrents and the flood of water rises and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. You know, we look at some foundations in our lives. You know, we look back at Matthew chapter 7, 24. It states, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it, it is wise. When we listen to God's word, or we read God's word, we become wise. Just like an athlete, you know, an athlete, when they listen to someone or some to critiques, they become wise in their workouts. They become wise in the effort to win. Are we winning in life because our foundation is built on the rock? That's where the truth comes in. You know, we look at Hebrews chapter 4, 12. We look at that. It says, For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. The truth, one truth and the lies. But are we true to ourselves? Just like the last part, it states, it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Are we using the sword to open us up so we're, we are true to ourselves? Are you using that sword to actually say, hey, I need to work 
on this area of my life. You know, as an athlete or as someone that wants to be physical fit, they have to be true to themselves. The word is, does that truth come in? You know, do they go the extra mile? Do they stay after and work on their weaknesses? Just like in our walk, we go through the church has been shut down for 30 days. The church is a building, but we are the church. Are we working extra? Are we reading the word? Are we looking at devotions and building? That's what I'm encouraging you to do today is don't look at someone else's spiritual walk. Look at your own. Use that, that double-edged sword to open up your innermost thoughts. God knows what those thoughts are. Are you being true to yourself? Look at yourself in the mirror and say, God, I'm weak in this area. God, what words in your word can speak to my life? The truth changes everything. The truth is beautiful. God's word is beautiful. You know, we look at a little more of the truth. We look at John chapter 14, 13 through 14, and it talks about something here. You can ask for anything in my name, and I'll do it so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name, and I'll do it. First off, let's look at our Christian walk. What are we doing? You know, here's an instruction that says, ask in my name, and I'll do it. Are you asking God for some help? Are you asking God to guide your thoughts? Are you asking God to build your spiritual, mental toughness. What question are you asking God? You know, we, I hope you're praying to God. And the next one, I hope you're reading to see what God wants to do in your life. Some encouraging words. Maybe you read in a devotional or read out of his word and you're seeing what words you could do to encourage other people. You know, there's two great books in the Bible. There's Proverbs and there's the Hebrew. You know, they speak really truth. You know, there's been many times where people have said in my life, I'll show you your friends, I'll show you your future. That's actually true out of Proverbs. It talks about the enticement of friends. What's your atmosphere around you? What are your friends? Maybe in those last 30 days, God has told you that you need to change your friends. Or maybe you need to encourage your friends. That's between you and God. That's why the Hebrew 4.12 is saying, look at the innermost thoughts. What is God doing in your life? You know, as an athlete, we practice with a coach. We hear what the coach says in our spiritual walk. Are you listening to what Jesus wants to do in your life? An athlete will read to improve. They'll look at different coaching methods. They'll look at different techniques. They're reading up on that. Are you reading up on God's word? In conclusion, I challenge you with this question. Why do you do what you do? Why do you do what you do? You know, a little bit of my life in this last seven years, almost eight years, my foundation has been rattled. My foundation was shaken. Was my foundation really on a rock? I had to ask myself those questions. I had to be true to myself. But why do I do what I do? Why do I believe what I believe? Because I have seen miracles. I have seen the God's word transform people's lives. I have seen radical transformation. That's why I do what I do. That's why I love people for who they are. I love to see where the rubber hits the road. What's going on in your life? What are you doing because you do what you do? Are you being truthful to yourself? Are you 
delivering the same medicine that you tell other people to do. And I'm not talking about the physical medicine. I'm talking about the words of encouragement, the way you encourage people. Are you living your life the same? That's what God did. He lived his life the same, and he delivered the same message. Look at your foundation. Are you building on top of your foundation the foundation that it needs to be built on? Are you putting sound on the foundation? Are you putting concrete on the foundation? Are you being the solution to the problem? Or are, you, are you the problem to the problem? That's what I'm challenging you with. Next one. We need to maintain. We need to have maintenance in our foundation. You know, there's been many a times where we just look, hey, I built my life on a rock. I built my walk on the rock. But sometimes, you know, there's been many people that have read their Bible, you know, all the way through from Genesis to Revelation. But they don't stop there. They read it again. And they read it again. They're having maintenance in their foundation. What's your maintenance at? Are you maintaining just your foundation how it is? Or are you looking at the maintenance to your foundation? Are you adding the concrete to where the stilts are on the rock? That's what I'm leaving with you today. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you are doing in our lives. Lord, I ask that people look at their foundation and they just don't add sand to the foundation, but they add some concrete to that foundation. So their foundation becomes more sturdy instead of shaky. Lord, I ask that this is their day that the Lord has made in their life. Lord, I ask that you change them from the inside out. The words that I deliver today, I ask that you do your will. Lord, I thank you for what you are doing in the lives. Lord, I ask that you look at their foundation with them. I ask that you ask them the question by the Holy Spirit from their head to their toes. Lord, I ask that you anoint their bodies and their minds, Lord. Lord, I thank you for what you are doing. Thank you for what you are doing in their lives. Lord, as we leave here, Lord, as this message is ending, Lord, I ask that you continue to go with them. Bless them in a mighty way. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Why do you do what you do? That's what I leave for you today. I love you. I'll be praying for you. I thank you for watching this sermon. Have a great Sunday.